Japan is hands down the vending machine capital of the world. But in Japan, some clever bosses are recognizing that naps can actually boost productivity. From villages filled with dolls to robot hotels, <laughs> Japan is home to some of the strangest places you've probably ever seen. Join us as we travel into the heart of the world's strangest country and explore 20 unusual things you definitely won't see anywhere else. Number 20. Thousands of Vending Machine If there's anything the people of Japan hold close to their hearts, it's vending machines. According to reports, there are over 5 million vending machines located across Japan. With a population of around 125.7 million people, that's about one vending machine for every 23 people in the country. It's hard to overstate Japan's total infatuation with the vending machine. The country has so many, there's one for every 30 people. Unlike the vending machines in other developed countries, Japan places no limit on what can be dispensed through a vending machine. You can get anything and everything from these machines, which are strategically located at every corner and every street. But for sheer mind-numbing variety and volume, Japan is hands down the vending machine capital of the world. This includes perishable items like raw eggs, lettuce, and even fresh fruits. How do they ensure these things don't go to waste? Well, the design of the vending machines is also quite different from those in the Western world. The vending machines are equipped with a refrigerating system, which ensures that the produce remains in tip-top shape until a customer comes to pick it up. But why are vending machines so popular in Japan? Well, the first answer is convenience. A low crime rate and a craving for convenience have made Japan a mecca for automated self-service. The Japanese people are known for their ingenious solutions to simple problems. And so, in a bid to ensure that the citizens get access to anything they want whenever they want, these vending machines have risen as the savior of the people. Also, the percentage of car ownership in Japan is quite low, which means that most of the people shop for groceries in the baskets of their bicycles. So these vending machines make grocery shopping easier, faster, and more convenient. Number 19. The World's First Robot Hotel With the level of technological advancement in Japan, it should not come as a surprise that the nation is home to the first robot hotel in the world. Welcome to the Henna Hotel where the imagination clashes with reality. Imagine walking into a hotel where every member of the staff is a robot. While this may sound like a fever dream or a scene from a sci-fi movie, the Henna Hotel is a real place located in Tokyo, Japan. From the front door, guests are welcomed by these service robots, but that's not where the intrigue ends. Every department is filled with these robotic companions, from the room service, to cleaning, and even the security. Some of these robots are designed in a strange, human-like way, while others take on the form of friendly dinosaurs, which can communicate in Japanese, English, Chinese, or Korean. Welcome to the Hanel Hotel. If you want to check in, please press 1. If you want to check out, please press the check out of the right of the touch panel. The hotel uses a facial recognition system to allow the customer access to the rooms, while the laundry is handled by the revolutionary True Steam technology. However, many of the guests who have stayed at the hotel complained about the lack of human interaction. Although robots are generally more efficient and can work for longer than humans, the place of human presence cannot be understated, especially in the hospitality industry. Could Japan be spearheading a new revolution in the industry? Are we going to be seeing more and more robot hotels springing up in several parts of the world? We'll have to wait and see. Number 18. Workplace nap time. Speaking of convenience, working in Japan comes with certain perks, part of which is the opportunity to take a nap even when you're at work. While those of us in the Western world have to toil all day without taking time to snooze a little, workers in Japan enjoy a more flexible work schedule thanks to the Japanese culture of Inamuri. To put it simply, Inamuri is the art of napping at work, a cultural phenomenon that can only be found in Japan. The practice originated back in the 1980s when the country experienced a massive economic boom 
and has evolved as part of the Japanese work culture over time. So, does this mean Japanese workers are lazy or unmotivated? Quite the contrary, to be honest. According to their beliefs, napping at work is a sign of hard work and dedication, and staff are encouraged to rest whenever they feel the need to. However, even though workers are allowed to sleep at work, these nap times must not clash with work-related activities, and everyone must be ready to wake up on short notice. The practice also stems from the fact that Japan is one of the most sleep-deprived nations in the world. According to statistics, most Japanese only manage to sleep for 6 hours and 35 minutes every night. One recent study by the University of Michigan found that, on average, Japanese workers slept for less than seven and a half hour a day. So it's only fair that they have the liberty to sleep whenever they want during the day. Could this system work in the United States, though? We really doubt it. Number 17. The Doll Village. Excuse me. Excuse me? Hello? Deep in the heart of the Tokushima Prefecture in Shikoku Island, Japan, is a strange village with a tale that boggles the mind. This is Nagoro, the doll village. Most people would be creeped out by the sight of this remote village. Or how else would you explain why there's a classroom filled with life-size dolls? But there's a very interesting backstory to this weird place. You see, back before things took a dark turn, Nagoro was occupied by about 300 people. However, Japan has recently been experiencing an alarming drop in population. This, coupled with the advancement in urbanization, resulted in a sharp decline in the village's population. From around 300 inhabitants, the village's population dwindled until there were less than 30 people left, and it became more of a ghost town. People were leaving to find better opportunities, and unfortunately, many of them never planned to come back. This could have been the end of the village's story, but one man had a bright idea that changed everything. Meet local artist Tsukimi Ayano, the brain behind the doll village. After seeing the landscape become a shadow of itself, Ayano decided to replace the people who had died or left with puppets made in their likeness. Although it looked creepy at first, everyone soon bought the idea, and before you could say Jack Robinson, Every corner of the village had been filled with dolls. As of 2022, over 350 dolls have found their forever home in the village of Nagoro, and the population keeps increasing with each passing day. Number 16. Cuddy Cafes One former salaryman himself has come up with a very unique business. A co-sleeping specialty shop. Uh, yes, people come here to cuddle. Here's something that might be a bit hard to believe. Did you know that in Japan, there are dining establishments known as soinea? And while the cuisine is always great, that's not the whole point of these cafes. To cater for the needs of those who are desperately lonely, this soinea or cuddle cafe offers the opportunity to cuddle up with cute girls. She says most guys come here to relax and rest after working hard all day. As weird as that sounds, customers are free to walk into this facility and engage in any non-sexual activity with the resident females. They can rest their head on a girl's arms or lap, or both. However, cuddling with strangers comes at quite a hefty price. For example, a 20-minute nap can cost up to $38, while a 10-hour full night package can cost up to $640. Customers pay about $40 to sleep next to a girl for 20 minutes. Quite expensive, to be honest. But according to the locals and tourists who have patronized these establishments, the experience is worth every penny. Added to that, the customer gets to choose the girl and the clothes she wears. And for an extra buck, the girl might even throw a little spooning into the mix. We know it's pretty weird, but this is Japan after all, right? Number 15. Japanese Umbrella Culture This is a technique called tabari. It's the most difficult step out of hundreds in making wagasa or traditional Japanese umbrellas. Another strange thing you might find in Japan is umbrellas. Lots and lots of umbrellas. Japan is extremely different from many other Western cultures when it comes to the umbrella culture. 
This is especially evident on rainy days, when you will find the widest variety of umbrellas you've probably ever seen. From the cheap, transparent variety, the more expensive automatic kinds to even the hydrophobic ones, everyone has an umbrella. Even when riding bikes in the rain, people have learned to navigate their way while simultaneously holding an umbrella at a 30 to 45 degree angle. This technique is commonly known as the rain joust position. But that's even the strangest part. Over in Japan, umbrellas receive a special attention, especially at business establishments and public places. Most of these buildings provide an umbrella rack of some kind, where residents or visitors can drop their precious umbrellas under lock and key so they can pick it up on their way out. Even on these streets, you will find these umbrella racks where you can park your umbrella or pick one up once the rain comes. Even more, bus stations also offer these free umbrellas that anyone can just pick up and use. These umbrellas are usually secured in a box, and after use, most citizens drop them at other stations so anyone else can access them. Number 14. Subway Pushers The Japanese rail network boasts of unrivaled superiority and punctuality, but there are way too many people utilizing these subways, so navigating every day can be a chore. For example, in the city of Tokyo, over 40 million passengers ride the rail every day, grossly outweighing other modes of transportation like buses and private cars. The train system itself is a marvel to behold. On average, a train arrives every five minutes, and during peak times, the interval can be reduced to about two to three minutes. However, despite the number of trains in operation every day, the subway is always extremely overcrowded. Because there are so many people traveling every day, some of these trains have to run at overcapacity and sometimes even double their normal capacity. So how do these teeming crowds fit into the trains? That's where the subway pushers come in. These are people who are employed for the sole purpose of pushing passengers into the trains, stacking as many people as possible on every trip. These white glove-wearing personnel are usually clad in uniforms, and new recruits even have to undergo training where they're taught how to cram as many people in a train as possible so the door can shut. Believe it or not, this is the reality of the Japanese people. Number 13. Shibuya Crossing Many cities around the world have their iconic landmarks, from the Statue of Liberty in New York to the Eiffel Tower of Paris. As for Japan, one of the most identifiable landmarks remains the Shibuya Crossing. If you've ever been to Times Square on a chaotic day, then there's a chance you know what it feels like walking through the Shibuya Crossing. Located just outside Shibuya Station, the crossing is regarded as the busiest intersection in the world. Although the scene is quite picturesque, with giant television screens mounted on the buildings and several lights and advertisements covering the area, the most noticeable feature here is the people. From dawn till dusk, the Shibuya Crossing experiences a stream of people pouring in from every corner until they all meet in the middle. Throughout the frantic mess, there's usually some bumping, sidestepping, and the constant need to avoid obstructing other people's paths. This famous crossing has been featured in several movies, including Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. As many as 3,000 people cross this intersection at a time, which amounts to between 2 to 3 million commuters every single day. This could actually stem from the fact that the area around Shibuya is actually home to several entertainment facilities, including bars and clubs. Number 12. Ramen Noodle Bath The people of Hakone in Japan have a long history with ramen, however. Most of them don't eat ramen. Of all the strangest things ever seen in Japan, this might be a top contender for the strangest. Located in the southeastern town of Hakone is the Unesan Spa House, which offers a ramen bath experience for its clientele. Imagine soaking in a literal bowl of ramen noodles. Now that's pretty strange. Typically, the bath consists of ramen pork broth, as well as some synthetic noodles to complete the experience. According to the spa's owner, Ikuro Furuya, this strange bath helps develop smoother and healthier skin by boosting collagen, although scientists are quite skeptical about such a claim. While many people consider the experience quite thrilling, others can't even stand the idea of skinny dipping in a bowl of food, especially since the mix can actually irritate the skin. Where else would such an oddity exist, though, but in Japan? Number 11. Blue Traffic Lights 
In most countries around the world, traffic lights usually feature the red, yellow, and green lights. But in Japan, things work quite differently. You see, instead of green, Japan uses the color blue to signify go. How did they get here, though? The story takes us back to 1973, when the Japanese government declared that all traffic lights should feature the bluest shade of green. This strange distinction stems from the linguistics of the Japanese language. Back in the day, there used to be a single word for both blue and green. And even after the new word Midori was introduced to represent green, most people still considered the color a shade of blue. Even though it's been many years, official documents continue to refer to the green traffic light as AO, the word for blue, instead of Midori. Rather than changing the official descriptions, the officials decided to change the light while trying to stick as close as possible to international laws. Because of this alteration, traffic lights across Japan sport the blue color instead of green, although it would still be pretty distinguishable for any tourist. Number 10. Tuna Eyeballs Beyond strange infrastructure and weird practices, Japan also boasts of some unusual cuisines and snacks. One good example of this is the infamous tuna eyeballs snacks. This strange meal became a staple in Japan back in the Edo period, which was between 1603 and 1868. During this period, tuna eyeballs were eaten as part of a traditional fish meal, which was served with soy sauce. Over the years, the custom has been passed down through generations, and it still remains a part of the Japanese food culture. Today, it's not uncommon to find these peculiar packages in several Japanese shops. Locally, the snack is known as Maguro no Madama and is usually served as an appetizer or a snack. Nutritionally, this meal serves as a good source of protein, vitamins, and omega-3 fatty acids, and according to the locals and tourists, the taste is always a delightful treat. Number 9. No street names. In many cities around the world, it's quite typical to have streets with names to aid navigation. But in Japan, that's not the case. This is because the addressing system used in the country is quite different from most Western countries. Rather than having names, the city is divided into blocks designated by numbers. While this may be quite confusing for visitors from the Western world, regular Japanese citizens are not exposed to other systems, so this is essentially the norm. In some cases, though, some streets are given names, although the names are usually ignored by the locals and postal workers. The numbering system can also be confusing. For example, houses or buildings within a block are usually assigned a number. However, the numbers are not assigned by order. The reason is that houses are assigned these numbers when they're constructed. So house number one can be situated next to 11, making the whole debacle even more confusing. Crazy as it may seem, the locals have learnt to navigate the system efficiently, and unless a visitor points it out, it never stands out as odd or abnormal. Number 8. The Capsule Hotel Japan is one of the most densely populated nations in the world, so space is often a luxury not everyone can afford. While the country is home to some prestigious hotels, one hotel that stands out for its unique design is the Capsule Hotel, also known as the Pod. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. Situated across several parts of the country, a capsule hotel offers guests a unique type of affordable accommodation. Each guest occupies a bed-sized pod, which can conveniently house a single person for the night, except you won't be able to stand up. Also, since this is Japan, the door will not lock, as this goes against the country's culture. These capsules are arranged in rows and double-stacked, and sometimes feature air conditioning, as well as a power outlet to charge your devices. Since there's basically no space to store your belongings, guests are required to keep their things in a locker secured by the hotel. These unique facilities offer a solution to the country's overpopulation problem, which gets even more compounded during tourist seasons. Also, a typical capsule costs about $23, which is a pretty fair sum considering the fact that hotel rooms in Japan can cost up to $100 for the basic ones and up to $500 a night in some cases. Number 7. Kanazawa Ice Cream Everyone around the world loves ice cream, but the people of Japan take things to a whole different level. Fed up with the soggy cones and sticky fingers that result from eating ice cream, some Japanese inventors have concocted a new kind of ice cream that doesn't melt. 
It probably sounds like a fantasy, but it's very, very real. The story of this strange discovery dates back to 2011, the year Japan was hit by the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. While there was widespread destruction due to the natural disaster, local strawberry farmers had their own problems to handle. No one was willing to buy their strawberries, which were strangely misshapen. So researchers asked a chef to create a dessert using the polyphenol liquid extracted from the strawberries. But there was another problem. Every time the chef added the polyphenol to dairy cream, the cream would solidify instantly. After several frustrating attempts, the researchers decided to investigate the root cause of the instant solidification, and he discovered that polyphenol liquid contains properties that make it difficult for water and oil to separate. Working hand in hand with the researchers, the chef in question began experimenting with the liquid, creating a kind of ice cream that keeps its shape for a longer time and is harder to melt. They called it the Kanazawa ice cream. Immediately the ice cream went on sale. Journalists were queuing by the dozens to discredit the claims. But one by one they came to realize that this was, in fact, a real invention. One of the curious journalists even tried applying heat from a hair dryer to a regular ice cream and one of the new polyphenol kinds. The results were astounding. While the regular ice cream melted almost instantly, the Kanazawa ice cream kept its original shape even after five minutes of heating. Surprisingly though, the ice cream still maintained the texture and taste of regular ice cream, but you'll have to travel all the way to Japan to get a taste for yourself. Number six. Ice cream heaven. Speaking of ice cream, did you know that Japan produces the widest variety of ice cream flavors in the world? While the rest of us only enjoy the few basic flavors available, the Japanese feast on some of the strangest ice cream flavors you've probably ever seen. It all stems from the fact that in Japan, hyper-local ingredients play a major role in the food culture, so they are often incorporated into everything. Also, Japanese chefs and food scientists are never afraid to experiment so you might encounter a couple of interesting flavors. From soy sauce to garlic to stranger options like eel and shark fin, you have so many options to choose from. While those of us in the West may disagree with these flavor choices, locals relish in these unique dishes, and to be honest, they may not even taste as weird as they sound. Before we go on with the rest of the video, here's our subscribers' pick for today. As we explore 20 unusual things that you only find in Japan, here's something you may have never seen before. This humongous shrimp was captured by a local Japanese fisherman, and it has been a subject of marvel since its discovery. But what species of shrimps can grow this large? And even more importantly, is this photo even real? While Japan has unveiled some strange discoveries, the idea of an 8-foot-long shrimp is quite ludicrous. Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments section down below. Now let's get back to the video. Number 5. Zhao Fox Village This is the Miyagi Zhao Fox Village, a small community located in Shiroishi, Miyagi, Japan, which is home to hundreds of foxes. Strange as it may seem, no human lives permanently in the vicinity. Instead, the whole structure is built for and occupied by foxes. Often regarded as the cutest place on earth, the Fox Village is open to tourists and visitors who want to interact with and maybe even feed the foxes. However, tourists are advised to avoid hand-feeding the wild animals or petting them, or else they may bite. On an average, there are over 100 foxes in this sanctuary, ranging from the typical red and arctic foxes to others with silver and platinum coat colors. This peculiar village is also home to rabbits, miniature horses, goats, and guinea pigs, in addition to several gift and snack shops. However, the sanctuary has come under heavy criticism in recent times. You see, foxes are naturally solitary animals, so keeping them in large numbers can pose a great challenge. The village has also been criticized for a perceived lack of greenery, poor sanitation, and even poor treatment of the animals. Away from these dark clouds, though, the fox village continues to inspire curiosity among both tourists and local residents, and it remains one of the most visited tourist hotspots in Japan. Number 4. Puchicolator, World's Shortest Escalator This is the world's shortest escalator, located in Kawasaki, Japan. Situated right at the basement levels of Moore's department store, 
The escalator is just 2.7 feet tall and contains as few as five steps. While the idea behind this invention may be quite debatable, it still holds a world record, so that's a plus. While you can probably walk faster up the stairs than the escalator can travel, it would definitely be a thrilling experience to slowly go up the stairs on the world's shortest escalator. Since it was first introduced into the mall, the escalator has become a sort of tourist attraction, with many people traveling to the city just to take a ride on it. Thankfully, it is located away from the hub of activities in the mall, so getting a ride should be a breeze. Although the escalator itself isn't all that extraordinary, most people visit for the thrill of experiencing something almost nobody knew existed. Number 3. Canned Food Restaurant Japanese cuisines can sometimes be quite interesting, to say the least, and sometimes eating out can take on a whole new meaning. While most people wouldn't consider tinned food a gourmet meal, one restaurant chain in Japan had built a reputation for only serving canned foods. This is Mr. Kanzo, one of the most popular restaurant chains in all of Japan, with more than 40 locations across the country. The whole idea started in 2002, when the first Mr. Lanzo opened in Osaka City, Minami Hori. From the very beginning, the restaurant maintained the culture of canned dining, which also required the diners to eat the food with plastic knives and forks. While this idea may sound unconventional to the rest of the world, diners can enjoy over 300 meal options at these restaurants, which is the reason most people visit the restaurant in the first place. Good idea or bad idea? We'll leave that for the Japanese to decide. Number 2. Strange Kit Kat Flavors Just like the ice cream in Japan, Kit Kat chocolate bars also take on a new look in this peculiar country. As of 2024, there are over 300 different flavors of Kit Kat available in Japan. Why? Basically because the Japanese people love to experiment. From tame options like the green tea flavor to extreme cases like the wasabi, Kit Kats just don't taste the same in Japan. Coincidentally, the word Kit Kat bears a striking semblance to the expression kidokatsu in Japan, which means you will surely win. Because of this, Many Japanese love to gift their friends and families Kit Kat as a sign of good luck, especially for students taking university exams. Number 1. KFC for Christmas Dinner Every Christmas in Japan, over 3.5 million families sit down to enjoy a gourmet Christmas meal of the old Kentucky Fried Chicken. But the problem is that Japan doesn't celebrate Christmas. So how did this tradition start in the first place? To understand the history of this culture, we travel back to the early 1970s when KFC just planted its roots in Japan. As part of the marketing campaign, the manager of the Japanese branch decided to go with the catchphrase, Christmas is Kentucky. And while the Japanese people didn't essentially fancy the holidays, the idea that they could enjoy a Western thing was in itself thrilling. So since then, every Christmas families queue down the street outside KFCs to pick up their Christmas packs which usually include a whole chocolate fudge cake, a commemorative plate featuring Colonel Sanders as Santa, and of course, the iconic fried chicken. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.